Nafisa Collier, Courtney Williams, and head coach Cheryl Reeves speaks after Minnesota Lynx takes game one of the WNBA finals against the New York Liberty. Check out the video. Courtney, Cheryl, <clears throat> Nafisa, we'll begin right away with questions. Uh, second row to your left. Uh, coach, uh, you've seen a lot in seven trips to the finals. Where is what these two did in the last eight minutes of the game rank? Well, we're the first team in WNBA playoff history to be down 15 uh, and come back and win the game. Um, so that ranks really high. Um, I think it defines our team uh, in terms of being able to get through difficult times. You know, that, that's, that's what we say we've been talking about. All these interviews have been given. So we're talking about is, you know, you have to be mentally tough, resilient, you have to look inward and not blame other people uh, and, and give each other uh, confidence. Um, and we were, you know, and we were that team. And, uh, you know, thrilled that uh, we could hang in there. Next question. Uh, second row center. I'm sorry, first row center. Go ahead. Courtney, your father told me and Tarika that the links were going to come back and that you were going to go off. What is it that he knows about you and this team that he was able to be so confident in what was going to happen? I mean, he believed in us like we believe in ourselves. Um, I think we have such a tight-knit circle with our families involved as well, and we all know what we can do and that we never give up. So, I mean, he embodies all of our families. They all believe that we can come back, we can win, we can stay composed and um, hopefully win, and that's the, the basketball guys was on our side tonight. Uh, next two questions will come from the front row to your left. Go ahead. Hey, Courtney. Uh, there have been some names swirling about you know, your mid-range game, the mistress of the mid-range. Uh, uh, I feel like there might be a more appropriate, maybe mistress. like monster or maniac. What, if you had to pick one, what would you what would you go with? Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, whatever the folks want to call me, man, I'm with whatever. As long as they show showing love. If you show showing love, you can call me whatever. Also on the front row to your left. Um, for Cheryl and Courtney. Courtney, the other day you were talking about um, when you signed with Minnesota that you knew you were going to have to be more of a distributor. Mm -hmm. And you were happy to play that role, that you've learned a lot. But I wondered if at some point in the in a huddle today, one of you said, like, well, I can still score, so that's what I'm going to go do <laughs> right now because you hit two huge threes. I mean, that's just a testament to how we believe in each other. We have so many great three-point shooters and the fact that these girls out here trying to get me the ball, like, I mean, I could cry. Like, this is just amazing. Like, I, I love it. I say that all the time. Like, and I don't just say that for fun. Like, these people that I'm around, like, we believe in each other so much. Like, it's, it's crazy, man. I'm happy to be here. From a basketball standpoint, Courtney recognized uh, that she had to get more aggressive, um, not pick up her dribble. You know, her team needed her uh, to be aggressive to go score the basketball, right? We needed some help. I thought Fee got going as well, um, but that, you know Courtney's you know been around for a while. She's been in, in finals games, and you know, she knows that her team needed her to get aggressive. The next question, second row center. Nafisa, um, with the emotional kind of ups and downs of this game, I mean, going down by 18, the way that regulation ended, even just the way the overtime ended, how did you all stay composed and stay resilient? Was there something you said to the team as a leader, and also just separately, how would you describe the de defensive impact you made tonight? I think just taking it one possession at a time. You know, we've been in situations where we've been down before, um, and that's when we really got to lean on our defense. So that was something we were talking about, getting three stops in a row, you know, chipping at it a little bit at a time, not thinking about the point difference, but thinking about the possession that we need to get a stop and then a score. Um, and so that's just what we were talking about at halftime. And then your defense, your on that end, Yeah, I just, you know, every game I try to go on an impact defensively, especially, you know, when they're going on a run like that, they have amazing offensive players. And so trying to be as disruptive as I can. Next question, front row center. Nafisa, um, speaking of your, your defense continually, uh, how do you put yourself in, in your mind um, for moments like when you are defending Brianna Stewart, when you have to be aggressive, when you know that they're going to be physical on you? What, do your, what does your mind go, or how do you put yourself in the mindset to be able to not only retaliate as far as being physical as well, but also maintaining your composure and your poise in those late-game situations? 
I think um, it just goes in preparation. Like our coaches do a great job of preparing us and, you know, playing tendencies and just playing defense. I mean, again, they're great offensive players. They're going to make plays. I just have to make it as hard as I can. Next question, third row to your left. Yeah. Courtney, right here. Um, where does that shot ring for you, the four-point play in your whole life when you made that shot and then also making the free throw? And now that you look back on it, both you, Nafisha, and Cheryl, where does that shot rank for you in witnessing that moment and her making the four-point play? Um, I don't know where it rang. I mean, it's one right now because we here. <laughs> you know, I like to be where my feet are. It's planted, so it's one right now. I'm just happy she made a clutch free throw because if you go and look, uh, that's why we Tell put her in the. the, stats. the... Tell the stats. <laughs> <laughs> so that helped her a little bit. Clutch free throws. That was good. Hey, and I wonder those five assists. Uh, is that one that you threw to Sad? Does that count? Mm, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be. I'll be. I'll mess that up. <laughs> Next question. Front, uh, front row, all the way to the right. Front row, where? Terry. Terry. Hi, coach. Um, after uh, the first quarter, it didn't feel like it was going to be one of your you know, quintessential defensive performances. But I didn't feel you, that way. You, well, That's your words. Didn't feel like it was going to be a game where you held them under 40% shooting. But just what was sort of the you know, initial like, rebound effect after that to uh, you know, sort of steady the thing and, and chip we away just, at it? You know, we know it's a, it's a long series, right? Nothing is won in the first quarter. You know, it was not the first quarter that we were hoping for. Um, what our narrative was in the timeouts was we had to just find our footing, find our footing defensively, and we did the second quarter. You know, we held them to 12 after giving up 32. Uh, and I, we went into halftime, like, in good shape. Um, and, and uh, you know, no question about it, the second chance points are really, really disappointing. Um, you know, that could have really cost us, and, and uh, we were very, very fortunate that we overcame that. But um, defensively, you know, we, we knew what we had to get done. Uh, once our offense improved a little bit, we stopped turning the ball over. Um, you know, but they're, they played terrific. I thought New York played terrific. I mean, their, their pace is terrific. And, you know, they, they run so many, you know, great things. And uh, they're unique in what they do. And they, you know, they, they found J.J. repeatedly. She had a tremendous game. And we had to overcome a lot. Um, and then you look up at the end and, you know, that we're, you know we, got, we held them below, you know, below 40%, which is, that was monumental. Um, a lot of that was obviously late. Uh, we got big stops when we needed them. And, and uh, you know, repeatedly, whether balls going out of bounds and 50-50 balls, you know, referees, whatever, you know, whatever happens, jump balls, fouls, all that stuff. We, we just had to be gritty at the end. We had to get stops to win. Uh, and that's, that's what I'm proud of. Uh, we have time for a few more questions from the room. Next one will come from the uh, center, third room. <laughs> yes, this question is for Coach. Um, Alana Smith, you know, she doesn't blow you away on statistics compared to Courtney and Aficia, but it just seems like she does the small things really, really well. Screening, rebounding. Yep. Can you just talk about the intangibles that she brings That's to well the said. team? Uh, Lana is one of our highest warp players. If you're into analytics, the wins above replacement player, she's one of our highest. Um, you know, it's not, like you said, she's not going to wow you. She's not going to fly around scoring the ball, making post moves, right? It's not her. Um, but what she does for our team, both offensively and defensively, um, it's, it is, it's not underappreciated, I can tell you that. It's a little bit understated. Um, people, you have to really watch to, to recognize what she does for us and, um, you know, fighting through. And she's all every night, you know, she's playing against the, you know, the opposing team's big. And she's not big. Uh, and so, so if you look at the success that she has in doing that, um, it's the reason why we're sitting here today in the finals. Um, you know, she's second team all WNBA, you know, along with a defensive player of the year. You know, those two are the heart and soul of our defense. Uh, next question, second row to the right. Uh, Coach, congratulations. congratulations. Thank you. Um, you mentioned the rebounding a little bit, and the stats say you were out-rebounded by a fairly wide margin for most of the game, but Nafisa had those two offensive rebounds before her basket. Alana Smith had the rebound before the four-point play. Yeah. Is that a testament to it's not necessarily the margin or the number of rebounds compared to when you get those rebounds? That's no, it is the margin. No. <laughs> <laughs> it is the mar no, but I, I hear what you're saying in that uh, when it mattered, you know, we got, we got some hustle plays, and we always say you never know which one's going to be the difference between winning and losing. You know, that last possession, we actually, I think we learned uh, from an earlier playoff game uh, when we were down how we wanted to play that last possession. 
Uh, and so being aggressive and, and, and getting, you know, getting, getting the three ball and do what we had to do if one didn't go in, you know, get as many chances as we could get. Uh, next question, fourth row all the way to the right. Hey, Coach. Um, you had like a four-minute stretch in the fourth quarter where you played Fee at the five and downsized with Natisha next to Courtney in the backcourt. I'm just wondering, given the rebounding disparity and how well John Quell had been playing, what gave you the confidence to be able to? You know, if the bigs weren't rebounding, you might as well go small. You know, uh, it couldn't get any worse, right? Uh, and what we wanted was was just a couple of ball handlers, couple you know, get downhill, you know, try to get some easier stuff um, uh, and pace, et cetera. Um, and that was actually, I don't know if it was Katie or Rebecca, uh, but that was something that they asked for. It was a really good call. All right, last two from the room, uh, second row to the left. Uh, Fee, um, when you were called for that foul, eight tenths of a second left in regulation, it felt a lot like that overtime loss here earlier this season. Um, when, when she missed that second one, was, was that kind of a galvanizing force for you guys into the overtime? Okay, look, we got another chance here. Let's get it done. Yeah, I mean, it felt like we got a second chance. You know, obviously, like, you don't want to be put in that position. Um, wish I wouldn't have fouled. Wish it wouldn't have been called, whatever it was. <laughs> Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, you're not thinking about that in the second. You're just thinking about making sure they don't get the rebound, making sure that we're boxing out, you know, going to our next play. Um, so yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Uh, next question, front row center. Hey, I saw that Lindsey Will had travel, traveled uh, to New York with the team to watch the game today, and I was sitting in front of her, and I heard her coaching, like trying to coach through. Did she impart <laughs> any words to you all? I mean, obviously she's one she's with you, here. Cheryl. Yeah, I don't know if these guys I didn't know, know she was she here. Was there. I didn't know she was here. Yeah. 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 Did she was know? texting uh, to the bench. Uh, <laughs> so a lot of the good stuff we did, she was sending in to us. Gotcha. Thanks, Coach. Uh, our last question will come from Zoom. We'll go to Howard. Howard, go ahead. Congratulations on the win, guys. Uh, Cheryl, you have spoken about concern about the way your team is finishing games throughout these playoffs. I would imagine that's obviously not an issue tonight. I'm wondering what you saw differently out of your team tonight in the way they finished uh just specifically the well role. the games that we and were talking about we were we were up we were managing leads uh we weren't finishing well the fundamental difference is we were down um so be sure to like comment and subscribe see you in the next video hoop life family